Well, hey McFly subscribers. So today I'm going to be tying a game changer. This is for an order. This gentleman's getting five, all different colors. All right, so I had to count that out. That's seven. I usually do seven wraps. Um, that is 0 0.015, I believe. Size lead, I use lead free wire. Use my dirty fingernails and fingers. I've been working so much in the garden. I've got cuts and everything. Um, all right, so next, usually I use uh, Vivas 140, but I'm out. So I'm looking for a flat thread. You'll want to also something strong. This is 100 to near Nano Silk, which um, it's a little slippery, in my opinion. I, I don't like it as much, but, um, and it's, it's harder to cut. So I mean, it's strong. It just is not as easy. Um, and we're just using this to wrap over the lead. Now, as you notice, I've got this angle down a little because it just makes it easier to get this on there. So we're going to jump over it once we kind of get that down in the position that we want. And then and we just want to cut it off. Now you really need sharp scissors with this. It's it is super strong stuff. Um, most scissors do not cut this. I, I, I'm using the risen scissors and they're cutting it just fine. Now I'm unwrapping the thread, uncording the thread, sorry. And that makes it like a little flatter. So this is going to allow me to cover all those thread wraps. As you can see, they're all covered. Maybe a little bit of the lead sticking out, but not going to hurt anything. There, and then we're going to use some, I got Loctite, but any kind of brush on super glue I find is a little easier than regular super glue. But we'll just brush this on. And that only start with the hook. So I'm actually tying five of these. So I'm going to go ahead and do five more of these. But I always start with the hook because then it allows, I stick it on something like this and I do five and then allows that to dry. And then I'm ready and then I can work on the tails. All right guys, so I got all the lead wire on there and you might be asking why. Well, that kind of helps write this because sometimes it wants to spin when you strip it hard. And so that'll keep it so the hook point is facing down um, and it also kind of stabilizes the head a little bit and allows that tail to whip a little more. It gives a little more weight up front, which is kind of what you need to be able to stabilize it and then cause that back to, to turn. So next we're going to use, uh, Chickaboo. And I like this. You could use anything for the tail, but I like doing two, two feathers of Chickaboo. And so simply I just align the tips, wet them down. Makes it easier to tie in. You know what? I didn't start the thread. <laughs> so I'm going to be using Viva 6 Ot. I like it better than that um, that other stuff. It's not as slick, in my opinion, better for this application. Uh, that other stuff is basically GSP, I believe, which is notorious for being difficult to work with, although it is absolutely ridiculously strong. But I tie so many of these, I want something a little easier, you know? And Vivas 6 out is really strong as well. So, all right, so we are going to line the tips, wet it, and then tie it in directly on top. It's wanting to spin for some reason on me. I'm going to pull that back just a little bit because I want a little more tail. There we go. Pull this up. A lot of material to get through. It took a little bit of extra cutting, but well, I'm not liking this. It's not working 
cooperating with me. Here, let's get this to be wrapped. Real close wraps. And you can kind of lay everything down. Instead of just going back and forth a lot, you can kind of, there we go, sort of. Not super happy with it, but it will do. Uh, that broke on its own, which means it's not going to be a very strong lip finish. So now I'm redoing it. You know, guys, I might bring you along for this second one here to show you the right way to do it. This one had a lot of problems. There we go. So after that, I use Solarez Bone Dry or Ultra Thin, whatever you want to call it. It comes with a little handy paintbrush, kind of nice. Just paint it around that. And a lot of you ask, why am I not putting the material besides this tail section, leave a little gap? Well, um, I like it that way. Uh, it gives, gives a little more movement, uh, plus it's a little easier. Trying to trim that material up against this tail is such a pain. And I find there's it, it actually has a little better movement um, in the water, so I tie it this way. If you want to tie it yourself and try to deal with that, you're welcome to. But cut, I'm telling you, cutting up against that tail is not fun. So I tie it this way. You can tie it any way you want. All right, so I had gotten two, wet it. Let's try this tie-in once more. Yeah, that came out a lot cleaner, didn't it? By the way, these scissors are awesome. Gets you really in tight. They're mitten scissors from Risen Fly and super fine tip. I mean, real precision, super sharp. It's what I'm using. Um, granted, because it is such a thin tip, you know, uh, if you're cutting a lot of material, I mean, they're great for trimming uh, thread and stuff like that. But if it's a lot of material, you might want to step up to like a four inch standard or three and a half inch standard scissor to give a little more strength, but which they sell to risen cells, but there. You can see one by the way here dry. It just takes a minute to dry. And it puffs out and that's why I like that. It's a really nice looking tail. So let me tie the rest and then we'll come back to finish uh, to starting the, the little sections as we go up but i like to t as you can tell i tie these in steps so i tie a whole bunch of these little tails and then um, i end up tying you know this shorter section and then the longer section these different things so this is the six millimeter shank which we'll use next and then the eight millimeter we'll use after that and i tie it all in sections and that's what i do i, I find it's a lot quicker especially if i'm tying five or six of these which I, I sell in five packs quite often, so. All right, guys, so here is a six millimeter piece. It's this one here, articulated micro spine from Fish Skull, six millimeter. And we're simply now taking into consideration, you've got that little thing angling down from the, uh, from the tail piece. And I like to have that downward. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull this down to leave a gap. Let me just do it right on the vise here. There we go. And now that's in there. Again with our six millimeter Vivas. Go ahead and close that. Start the thread right on top. Next I've got this Crockett's uh, Chocolates, I don't even know how to pronounce his name, but he's the one that created the Game Changer, so 
should know it, but sorry guys. Uh, finesse body chenille. Okay, you could use the game changer chenille, which we will later for the whole thing. But I find that this being a little thinner works better for the first two little shank sections. So I pull off a little bit, exposing the core. We're just gonna wrap that back as far as we can. And then come forward, cover everything. Now, this is sharp right at the top here. So you wanna do two light wraps right in front of it. And you can come back over it like that and that will keep it from cutting your thread. And I've even had it cut this, so just be careful. So then we're gonna stroke all the fibers rearward and we're gonna start wrapping this. And the first couple wraps are always a pain. You're gonna have fibers everywhere. But we want to try to keep everything angled rearward. It's easier said than done. <laughs> so I generally on the first one here I get three or four wraps and you're going to come up over it with the thread like so. You want to wiggle the thread so it traps less fiber. And then you pull everything rearward. Helps if you wet your fingers a little bit. Kind of grips more of the fiber. Sorry if my fingers are in the way, guys. It's kind of hard to do this like that. All right, so then I, I pull it back, wrap back up on top of it, and that really secures it. I like these really fine point scissors like I was talking about before. It allows me to get in and get in tight. There we go, and then we can whip finish. Now, I like setting the whip, or setting the thread. Got this little thing there to set the thread on. And then I can pull everything rearward while I whip finish. Three or four turn, or four turn, maybe even five would be good, but four turn is good enough. Whip finish, cut it off close. I really like this ultra thin bone dry stuff for this. I'm just going to paint it around the whip finish to secure it. Cure it with the UV light. And that's the first section. Now some people will go ahead and cut as they go. I cut it all at once. I find that easier and quicker. So we're going to do a second section here. And again, make sure that this is angling downward like so. You can see that little little piece there. I'm just going to attach this on now. And the rest of this is kind of repetitive. Um, little differences as we go, but so I'll still bring you along, but oh, I have to cut that one. Kind of hard with the camera in the way. I don't have full range of motion here. All right. So again, pull off some of the core or pull off some of the fiber to expose the core. Wrap up, a couple loose wraps right in front to cover that sharp section. And again, we're gonna just wrap this. Now, I try to get this section as I go. I want it more and more dense, more and more fiber. So really try to wrap right on top of it That's one wrap, two wraps. Three wraps. I might only get four. Usually try to get five. Four or five is still good. Yeah, I can get a fifth. All right. Fifth wrap. Pull everything back. Wrap back up on top of it slightly. Cut the core off close.
pull everything out of the way before you whip finish. Now, as you can see, I whip finished and I'm slightly covering the eye. So you can use your fingernails, if you have them, and slightly work that by pinching back, as you can see, and that exposed it just a little more. And that should be plenty to be able to hold right in the, in the next section. It is a rather thin wire, so. See how quick that cures? That's hard now. I love that stuff. So now you've got three total sections. It's starting to do a little wiggle. And it'll do more later. So now I'm going to finish the next uh, couple sections here on, on the others, um, other tails. And we'll add two sections to each tail. And you guys will see me in just a, well, for you, it'll be right away. For me, another 30 minutes until I get all these done. And then for the longer sections. I have finished all of the six millimeter sections two on each and now we are adding onto the these are eight millimeter sections as you can see here eight millimeter micro shanks so we're just gonna like like before close up now it wants to slide down sometimes so if that happens, just go back down and then back up again. Try to get back there as far as possible. And now we're using the Game Changer Chenille. This stuff is a little thicker, so you're not going to get as many. Well, you'll probably get about the same amount of wraps, but it's thicker, so it pushes out quite a bit more. So pull off to expose the hide like every other time. Wrap back up as far as you can. And come down again. Remember not to pull too tight there. Wrap around it. This piece is a little twisted. So I'm just gonna untwist it. And then just start wrapping it like before. So I got five wraps. Oop, what is going on here? All right. Now trying to not trap fibers is a lot more difficult with this game changer chenille because there's so much. Uh, this. All right guys, so somehow this isn't as tight as I wanted. This is going to be a little tricky. It might pop off, and if it does, I'm not sure what to do. Everything always goes wrong when I'm filming. Push that back with my fingers. Now I got a little bit of trap fiber here. It's okay. more careful right now since I've got this thing wanting to come loose I'll have to tighten it All right. you can see that's much bushier a little bit longer fiber too now you could use this for the other two sections. I'm sorry, this probably got blurry because it was moving around, so. But uh, you could use it for the first two sections. Of course, you're gonna get less wraps, probably two to three wraps in the first section. Um, there we go, kind of saved that. Somehow that was getting loose, so 
Gotta tighten that quite a bit. All right, the next one. Now I'm gonna try to get a little bit more wraps on there, which means I have to wrap a little bit tighter. And I mean, it's just a lot of repetitive, same thing over and over again. And once you get the hang of it, guys, I mean, it's really not that difficult of a fly to tie. Um, I mean, it's a lot of steps and a lot can go wrong, but for technical speaking, it's just not, not that difficult. The nice thing about this also is this Game Changer Chenille and the other stuff takes color really well. And so you get some Sharpies or ad markers or any kind of fly tying marker or whatever, um, art marker. Just something that is going to be water uh, waterproof, so it needs to be like a, like an alcohol based, or I think there's a solvent based. There's a couple different kinds, but um, you can color these to whatever color you want. Three, I think we're on. I'm talking and not counting. Four. I'm going to get the same amount as before. I think here. Five. Sorry if my fingers get in the way, guys. You gotta really stroke all those fibers back. You might have to do it a couple times to really, you know, get everything back because you just don't want to trap those over the eye eh, as much as possible. You're gonna trap a couple, but do your best. You always whip finish from the back to the front. You're gonna to wanna to try to do that as much as possible, It'll give you a better stronger and cleaner looking whip finish. But in reality, I mean, strength doesn't really matter a whole lot with this when you're using this kind of head cement, this Solar Res Ultra Thin. It really makes this never to come out. I mean, it's gonna stay like that not going to come loose. I've never had a whip finish fail on me personally, so especially when using that stuff. So anyway, there we go. Now we have the tail section. Now it's not going to move a whole lot in here because all the fiber, once we trim this up, then this will move a lot more, but the fiber catches on itself. Okay. And that's something to think about when trimming. When you're trimming, you're really going to want to bring the, some of these fibers out of the way because they will keep this from moving. I see a lot of people, they tie these and then they don't trim it well enough. And then it doesn't, doesn't really move in the water. I mean, even shaking it, only that tail is moving. The rest is not very much at all. We've got a couple, a little bit of movement on the bottom one, but not much until you trim it. So you really got to trim it. So now I'm going to go ahead and tie up the rest of the eight millimeter shanks and I'll be back with you when I'm done. So now we're gonna add the tail section onto the hook. And for that, I'm gonna use this. It's Senyo's thin intruder trailer, hook wire, whatever this is. It's coated, it's a wire, um, it's pliable. It's really easy to use, but you can use any material, uh, any kind of wire you want, okay? So I'm back to that slick um, nano silk stuff, okay? Um, again, the 140 power thread I think is a little better, but I mean, the outcome's all the same. The fly will turn out the same. It's just easier to use this slick stuff. Oh, see, sometimes it's hard to cut. And it's hard to hold on to because it slips right out of your fingers. It's so slippery. So it's hard to kind of get a grip on the thing. Now, how I like to do this is I will tie 
three or four really tight wraps here. And let's do five or six, actually bring it up a little further. All right, and then I pull this part back here. Let me turn this a little better for you guys. There we go. You can see how there's a little tag end. I bring that tag end back and then I wrap back over it. So that's gonna keep that from slipping out because it's wrapped back on, to, on top of itself. And you really gotta watch that with this really slick thread. So um, less so with the 140, but this is slick, so it makes it easier for that to pull out. So if it's wrapped back up on top of itself, it will not. So I decided to adjust the camera for you guys and give you a little better look looking down onto it instead of up. <laughs> I had a little too low there. All right, so now that that's on, we're gonna grab one of the tails and I'm gonna take the end of the wire. We're just gonna feed it through the eye of the, the tail section there. Then we're gonna pull this up. Let's pinch it and then make a couple wraps like so to just hold it and then bring this back so you can see how I'm pulling it back and forth here. So it'll allow it to slip through and you can find where you want that loop and then we can just wrap back up onto it. Make sure that that, see how slippery this is? Usually that would just stay with the um, power thread, but it's just strong stuff, really strong stuff. So anyway, you can see here, we've got a small loop. It allows this to freely move around, but it's not so open of a loop that it will foul on itself. So now you just basically wrap back up over everything like so. Okay, come forward past that little bump and then go back right before that bump, pull this back and now that's locked in. And grab wire cutters, of course. Cut that off close. And what that does is makes this a really thin little area. As you can see, we're not, I mean, there's a little bulk up, but we're not bulking up too much. We are doubling it back on itself, so it's making a pretty big bump right there. But then once we double up here, if we cut up right past that double up part, part there, and it just kind of makes a pretty even transition. A little bit of an extra bump, but not too bad. And you can go ahead, you can go ahead and whip finish. Cut off the thread. And it's very important that we use Loctite or super glue or whatever you have. Okay. Because again, it's very slick. Now, I use this. A lot of people have asked, why don't you use the resin? So that way you don't have to wait for it to dry. Because you do. You have to wait for this to dry for, you know, a few minutes. But the reason why is resin, while great for, you know, whip finishes and heads and then coatings on flies, anywhere there's going to be movement um, or a bending, uh, you don't want to use this because it, it can be brittle. It's very hard, so, but if it's going to bend, it can uh, break. And as you can see, there's a lot of movement here still. There's a bending, right? So the super glue, it's not really to hold, keep this from pulling out. What it is is to harden that so hard, the, the thread, that it won't budge. Um, there's no there's no bend, um, and that's what super glue will do. It, you know, and it, it, it will not flake off. It won't it won't crack the same way that resin would. Um, resin again, nothing against resin. Resin's great for its application. Everything has its own application, and this is just not one of those for resin because again, that movement, the bending. Um, but for whip finishes, um, it's perfect. I mean, absolutely perfect. In fact, better than super glue. I think it, it even holds better. Um, in my opinion. Okay, so again, each application is different, but um, that's why I don't use that. So we're going to move on to the, the head here. And actually, I got to be honest, I only tied up uh, four, three actually tails. And I realized I was running low on my um, game changer chenille. I actually ran out and all I have 
is this left. It's a small, I don't know if you can see from there, but just a small section. That should be enough for just one, so I can finish this on camera. But I had to place an order, so I get it next week, and I feel bad for I feel bad for the gentleman that I, I'm tying it for because he has to wait another week. But um, he said it's fine. Um, but I, th I totally thought I had another package, and I'm out. So yeah, <laughs> so I'm I'm trying to get this one done. Hopefully, I have enough here to finish this up, and then um, you know I'll be able to finish this on camera, and you guys will see it uh, next week. It'll be this week when you guys see it, so <laughs> but next week for me of right now, but um, yeah, anyway, so I'm gonna let this dry, bring you guys back on when I tie up the head. So this has dried now, and I've switched back to the Vivis 6 Ot just because I, I really don't like the slickness of GSP, it's just so hard to work with. So. Let's, uh, we tie it on. You don't have to start way up front here. Just, you know, bring it back to there. And then, like before, we are removing some of the fiber from the core. And then we're just going to tie it on. And you want this semi-smooth transition. You don't want, like, a big bump somewhere. Because that could mess up the, the way this goes on. And then like before, we're just going to wind this on. So I generally get, I think it's 10, 10 or 11 wraps. Anyway, uh, whoops. See, so you want to make this tight. So I accidentally let go a little bit because it's a short piece. It's hard to hold on to. Um, and it unraveled a little bit. So every couple wraps, so I, I come down like this and I'll grab here. And I'll just give it a nice, uh, you know, nice pull, hard tug. And yep, I should have enough to be able to finish this. I knew I was close, and uh, it's semi-close. I had a little extra. So, all right. So I come up right to the head. Okay, you don't want to overcrowd the head. All right, we're just going to capture it like before. And like every single time, we're going to wiggle. Um through that material, wiggle the thread through the material. I'm gonna pull everything rearward. Might have to do this a couple times. There we go, got it all. Wrap back up on it a little bit. Hold this out, I'm gonna turn this so you guys can see it. Cut this off close, there we go. Helps to wet your fingers to make sure everything is pulled back. And then you've got a little tag end of uh, like core right there, the core of the material. You just want to make sure you lay that part down really well. There we go. Now we've got the tying portion done. Whip finish it, four or five turn whip finish. It doesn't have to be perfect because the way I do this, um, when I attach the eyes, that completely uh, covers that up with resin and glue and all that, so they're not coming loose, so it, it doesn't have to be a crazy whip finish. Then I use a little bodkin here, and I just pick this out because you will get some trap fibers. I had already pulled one out, you saw. Um, it'll just help with when you trim this up in a little bit. All right, so that's all picked out. We are now ready for trimming. As you can see, there's a little movement in the back here, but it's not a whole lot. And that's because, as you can see, it's getting trapped. All those fibers are getting trapped by the previous one. It's just not allowing it to really move. Those have to bend out of the way. So once we trim this up, this will really give a lot of movement. We're going to trim this. It is a process. This is the longest part of tying it, I think. So. Yeah, um, I use two different scissors for this, and even three sometimes. Um, generally, I have something called a Fiskars, um, and they're like spring-loaded, and they work really well for the first cuts. They don't work great for the next uh, few, but first cuts, it works great. But I can't find it since my move, so <laughs> we'll see if I can. I like that thing. 
Um, it was simple. I just got it at Walmart. It was cheap. Um, but uh, for the rest of the cuts, these risen scissors uh, are great. These are called uh, razor scissors. I think they're four inch. And these are the five inch hair scissors. So um, they've got little serrations in them. So it cuts pretty well. But this material wants to move out of the way. So we start at the very back of the tail. Move this out of the way. You don't want to cut the actual tail part. And just cut kind of an angle, as you can see, from the tail up to the head. Now, those fiskers bite a little bit more, um, which is actually later on not what you want. But for the this initial cut, we're doing a big cut. And I kind of round off at the front here because I know I'm not going to use it. Um, but this big cut, it's kind of nice to be able to have it bite in a little bit more. Okay, so one big cut. And we're just doing rough cuts right now, okay? Um, it's always better to cut more later than <laughs> cut too much at first, and then you can't put more on, right? So um, when in doubt, go a little bit less, right? Cut a little bit less because you can always look at it and come back later. All right, so we did the top. Oh, shoot. See, I just did a big cut. That messed it up. We'll see if that comes out. I might be able to turn that around. I think it, luckily it wasn't too deep. Um, usually I actually cut it a little bit deeper with those. Now we did the, the top and bottom. Okay, again, any little bits like that, I'm seeing it and I'm doing it, but they're really not necessary right now because we're gonna fix that. So you can see now we've got the side. Um, I generally like to just place it down like so. Hold on to that. There, I, I do it right at the edge. And unfortunately, you won't be able to see it, but that allows me to get my fingers below the table. Gives me some more room. So I'm gonna have to bring this up in my hand so I can come down like that and angle it. Um, see if we can get it to work. And then you wanna really, uh, you, you can cut pretty deep with this cut um, on the side because we're gonna actually, and I guess you don't, you don't have to, but I like to make these a little thinner then they are, you know, a little taller and thinner this way. Let's do the same thing. And we're cutting from the back to the front on this first round of cuts because it cuts it quite a bit easier since we're making big cuts. Um, we don't have to have as much precision, but it, it, it's easier because the fibers are pointed this direction, so they don't want to get out of your way as easily. Because if you go from this direction, you can see things want to move out of your way. You can cut, but you're just cutting just the tips kind of as they <laughs> as they move away, right? When you cut this direction, you're gonna you're cutting um, much more of the material. They don't get out of your way as much, so which is fine on these cuts. Don't go real deep onto it. You can see see now that that's a little bit thinner than it is tall. Okay. Again, we we're nowhere near perfect here. Okay, so then I place it like this. I pinch because that's gonna help me get a little more bite into the front. And I, I use the, the hook eye as a guide. I kind of make an angled cut up like this. As you can see, I'm pinching and I'm working my way up. And they do wanna move out of the way, these fibers, okay? It's, it's every scissor, even those fiskers, it moves out of the way when cutting this direction. And that's good because it allows you to continue trimming like this. You're, I'm trim, 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 but I'm not cutting way too much off, right? Um, Cause that would be devastating right now to cut way too much off. It allows you, almost like cutting hair, if you have ever seen a hair trimmer, they're always kind of cut, 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 and they're making little cuts as they go um, to shape it. Uh, that's what you're doing here. All right, so now we shape the, the front of the head here, okay? Uh, we're gonna have to, of course, do a lot more touch up, but we're getting kind of more of that rounded shape a little better. Now I, I look at it from the front and I cut more down deeper into the tail to really taper that tail. Now you want to make sure that you're not starting, it's not rotating, you're cutting the sides. You want to, you want to cut that taper down into the tail um, from the top. 
don't cut the, the tail fibers here. Okay. Now I can kind of come in from the side here when, when I know where the, the top is. So right there is the top and I can, so that way I know I'm not going to cut the tail, kind of work my way back a little bit. You don't want to do too much of this backwards cutting now. Um, be very careful with that. But so now we shape that top R roughly. Again, we're going to still do a lot more cuts. You can see that's angled down. Let's do a little more right here. It seems a little bit heavy right there. A little better. All right, so now the underside, we're gonna work on the underside now. We're gonna do that pinch, pull everything up, and here's the tip of the hook. Here's the head of the uh, hook eye, I mean, and we are angling so the tip of our scissors is right under that hook point. And of course, it's not going to get all of them, but you're just working your way through like that. And that's the angle that you're looking for. Okay, we're going to work at cleaning up all that front part a little bit more later. And then we're going to work our way under the hook here and this gets tricky under that hook gap um, it's a little little tricky here so a lot of times you have to turn on the side like this and just kind of cut this side and then cut that side like so and then we let's bend everything like so and let's cut that angle back we're going to cut that down make sure that we're cutting not the sides but the the bottom sometimes you can hold it like so if you got the dexterity to do it it's a little tough but it allows you to Look at it while cutting. We're just going to clean it up a little bit. Now, what that did is now we've got we've got to trim up the sides because that's tapered. But here, it's still fat. So, now we're going to lay this down. Let's move all this out of the way. And we're going to make sure that we don't have this twisted, okay? We're gonna make, we're gonna put our finger here, make sure that stays, and we're just gonna make cuts like so, all the way down. Make sure you don't cut here, okay? Keep those scissor tips um, just to right there. You don't wanna, you don't wanna cut that tail. You can't fix that once it's cut. And I'm gonna turn you guys down just a little bit. Okay, because I like to use the edge here because my scissors, I like to keep them flat. The problem is my fingers get in the way. Um, so I like to kind of keep them pretty low and I don't want my fingers getting in the way. So I have to work at the edge of the, the desk. We're just gonna make cuts. As you notice, sometimes I'm turning the scissors like this and I'm cutting along the sides here. Okay, because what happens is when you make those cuts, it becomes like a square okay so i'm just rounding that out to make it look more like like a bait fish bait fish don't have square edges okay they're rounded so we're just slowly trimming see i'm doing the same thing on the top um part of the of the fly just kind of angling you can see that curves it a little better rather than having just it would it would be like a square <laughs> if we didn't if we didn't angle that right so all right let's move let's work on the the next side again make sure that the tail is the right direction i'm going to put my finger on the tail to make sure that doesn't rotate you can even put your finger on the the hook here um that helps 
but we're, we're cutting downward now because if you cut up, you would be really kind of cutting into too much material. You really want to be careful with these cuts now, a little more careful than before. It looks a little better. Now I will look at it from the front and then I can see where I need a little bit of work. Sometimes you gotta pull it out and then back in. And you can see where everything flares out. And I've got some flare outs up here along the side there. So we know that that requires a little bit more cutting. We're just gonna slowly work this, just getting any piece that looks like it's out of out of place, kind of cut that a little shorter. But again, slowly. You don't want to make big cuts right now. You could ruin the whole thing. So, all right, that's a little better. We've got a little bit extra up front here. I'm noticing. Okay, and then I'm seeing here. Um, this needs to so um, there's like a sharp edge on that side. So we can pull that forward. Now I'm not going below the hook um, gap because now we've just pulled it forward. So as you can see, that goes way above. So we can just kind of cut a little bit like that. Just bring that back and see how that transitions. It's a little better. Um, let's pull this back. Now we know that this needs a little bit. We're just gonna make a little trim like that, a little trim like that, and that should transition slightly better. You can come in with one side too and do like a, a cut underneath and then over it, push it back, do another cut on that side. And that transition should be a little better. Yeah, there we go. Looks a little better. A bit of a sharp point here. That's okay. We'll just fix it. And again, as we go, we're just looking for sharp points, looking for places that need a little bit of touch up. I think right there does. And still, we're, this is just a rough shape, okay? We're not trying to make this one perfect even. Uh, we've still got more trimming to do later. But we're just getting, you know, getting the shape down quite a bit, but you wanna, it, it's gonna be a rough cut still. We're still gonna work on it later. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but that's moving a whole lot better than it was. Now we're going to fix that a little bit because we still have, you can see this is still catching right there. So we're going to trim this part up a little bit. Um, we can do that now or after we wet it, but let's go ahead and do that now. But we will have to run this underwater to get all the little fibers off. I find that that will help when adding the color. Right here, I've got a little section I'm not liking, so I'm just gonna trim that up. I think that's gonna, yeah. There we go. All right, so now that moves even more. So we're gonna do that on each one of these. We're just gonna kind of trim some of those extra long, long fibers up. We might do this a second time after wetting it. Uh, sometimes wetting it will release some of the trap fibers. And then when coloring it, it does as well. So usually <laughs> I do like three or four trimmings on these flies um, just to get them perfect. All right, that's, I don't know if you can tell in this angle, but it's a whole lot more movement. Yeah, we're still going to be trimming that up though. We're going to fix that and it's going to really move quite well. But it, it will have trouble getting, it can, as you can see. I mean, if you really try to work it, it can get fouled. But really in reality, when just swimming in the water, 
I mean, you'd have to really be stripping that pretty hard, I think. And I, I've never had it foul up, um, but mine moved pretty well. So um, some people say you got to make sure you keep some of that movement down. But what's the point of a game changer without movement, in my opinion? So I'd rather foul once or twice, you know, rare, but maybe have it happen once or twice, but still get that movement and get the fish interested. So I'm going to run this under hot water. Um, I find warm, not hot, hot, but like warm water will help um, soften these fibers, help release more trap fibers. Um, and also this will help keep everything angled rearward and be able to kind of give it the final look a little bit easier in my opinion. So I'm going to do that and I'll be back once this dries. So now that it's all dry, I'm going to color it. Now this customer had wanted there's a couple different colors he wanted. I'm doing actually five different colors, one of each. This one, he wants chartreuse back. So simple, you just color chartreuse. Now you could add, like make this a fire tiger, put like a orange belly or um, stripes or whatever. Um, whatever colors you want, you can, I'm sure you guys have seen the other videos where I don't, I don't make them quite as simple. I actually put like, I color it like a, sunfish or something um, but you can do that um, add dots add stripes um, all different color combos to look like whatever match the hatch kind of thing look like whatever bait fish that you want all right there now as you can see I'm going forward and then backward because that helps get it down deep into the um, fibers better. I'm just going to make sure it's all coated pretty heavily. Because we're going to end up trimming this. So if it's just the top layer there and you trim it, you're going to lose all that color. Sorry, I'm a little blown out here. Uh, switch lens and I forgot to. <laughs> a little bright. Sorry, guys. Hopefully it's. You can see it, but there we go. So now it's colored. Um, I like to let this actually dry a little bit because it is still a little wet. Let that dry, uh, you know, a minute or two. It doesn't have to be that long. Um, it is a solvent based, I believe. It might be alcohol based. I forget which this one is. Anyway, that's the marker, add marker. I like that chisel tip, especially for doing like whole backs because then you, um, you can do it colors a lot, you know. Um, you can use a Sharpie. So they make colored Sharpies. For instance, here's one. This is not chartreuse. This is like a greenish color, which I'm going to use on one of the other flies of his. But you can tell that, that um, the, the head on this, it would take a lot longer to try to color this because you just, you know, have to go back and forth so much. So on big, you know, on the backs of flies or whatever, so much better to use such a much larger you know, brush type kind of on these big ad markers. So, so that's up to you, whatever you want. These are a lot less expensive. I think you can get for like 20 bucks over at Costco. I think I saw $24 for, I don't know, like 40 different colors of these. So, you know, it's hard to beat. And those ad markers are $5 each. Um, you can also buy these on Amazon, which I'll link to in the description section. Similar prices, Costco, maybe maybe a little more money, I'm not sure, but yeah, you can you know use colored markies, markers and they work really well. And we're gonna trim this once more and then we're gonna add eyes, so it's not quite done, guys. So now we're just gonna do the rough edges here and as you can see, brushing that out with the, well, coloring it, um, kind of brushed out these, um, these fibers a little bit and also stiffened them. So it's gonna be easier to cut the back a little bit. So be careful on these cuts. It's not like down here where you can kind of cut into it and it, it'll kind of push out of the way. Um, but here I'm using the razor scissors for this. So I really like the razor scissors. They're a little shorter, easier to get more precise cuts. Um, I'm gonna do, I am gonna thin this out just a little bit on the side. And putting on the vise, what this allows, now we're gonna, Take it off the vise in a second, but it allows me to hold this tight so this isn't moving all around. And then I can get 
some precise cuts. Now let's work on the other side. As you can see, it makes all this dust, and that's why we rinse it, because that all, there's a bunch of bits of that caught in here after you trim it. And when you color it, that, that would um, be coloring those bits and not necessarily the fiber as much. So it's always a good idea to to do that. So I'm just going to work my way here. As you can see, it's pretty deep belly and I think a little too deep for this. So as you can see, I'm pulling this out from under sideways like that and then cutting so, because I've got the, the hook point or the hook in the, uh, in the hook gap, sorry, in the way. And if I cut, I'm going to hit that. So I don't want to dull the scissors and I want it to actually cut. It's not going to cut if the, that's in the way. So what I'm doing here is so I make a cut where I want it and then it squares off as you can see. So I like to round out the sides here a little. Okay, and all the way down too. We're going to want to round those sides. But first, let's look at the profile here. Okay, the top looks good because I could thin this whole thing out a little bit. So as you can see, you can make them really, you know, tall, um, you know, still thin, but tall, with a lot of belly on it, or you could make it less. Let's go ahead and trim up these sides a little bit on each of the You can see now we've got a lot more movement, right? But we're going to improve that a little bit. So I'm going to pull all this back. We're going to I like to kind of round from the bottom a little bit and then up and we're going to cut out these segments a little bit. Just get them a little out of the way so that way that tail has a little more room to whip around on and move under the water. It can be difficult sometimes to hold these, but just keep working at it. I'm going to just do this all the way down. Let's look at it from head on. I think the sides need just a little bit more here. So now you're going to see the difference. See how much more that moves, guys? Even this back one is going to move around a little bit more because it's not impeded with that. So it's going to give a little more wiggle. So the whole thing, hard to see from this angle, but yeah. All right, let's get the eyes on. As you can see, there's a lot of fiber here. So we've got to flatten that out a little bit. And I take these um, mitten scissors. And this is just how I do the eyes. Um, do them any way you want, but I just kind of start trimming away some of that extra fiber. These are a really fine tip scissor. They're not super strong, but they're ridiculously sharp. So they trim a small amount of material very well, but they get in nice and tight. So it allows me to get really close up to that shaft there. You can see I've removed most of that material. A little bit sticking up over here, but we're just kind of making a little circle area where those um, eyes are going to sit. So now let's do it to the other side. And we are going to do one last final trim once these eyes are on. <laughs> I know, so many trims, because I, um, once you put them on, that's going to affect the front here. It's going to flatten out certain parts. All right. And then you just want to take a comb and just comb all this out to get any of those 
fiber bits that you just cut out off there so that way the glue sticks better. Make sure that's flattened. Alright guys, so I've got the Living Eyes Earth in 5mm size. That's why I like for this, 5mm. You could use 6, I find that to be a little bit large. But they're, these are pretty nice looking eyes. I like the look of them. The earth color is nice for this. Um, has kind of a greenish tint, so it kind of works out. So, I turn it sideways like so. Put a dot of super glue right there. And a dot right there. Then I make sure and put the eyes like so, where you can see how they're the, the people is kind of off-center a little. It's more up front. I like to have that up front, but you could do it any way you want. Don't put one up front, one on the back. It'll look uh, cross-eyed or something. <laughs> so, then you just want to take it out and look at it. It's a little off-center. It's not too bad, though. It's pretty close. But you just want to make sure that's lined up center, which I think it is. There we go. We're just going to let that super glue dry. Alright guys, so as you can see there's a little cavity that's made between the two eyes there. So I've got this stuff, Solara's Thin formula. And if this was a much larger fly I would use the little bit thicker stuff. I think they've got a medium viscosity, but I'm just going to fill that, that little section up in between the eyes with the resin to be able to fill that and that will help keep those eyes from coming off because that, that super glue won't hold once they get a fish strike but that will help kind of keep that and then we're going to do the same thing on the bottom there's also a cavity on the bottom that will fill up but that's covered with fiber so we're going to have to cut that out and this is where those little tiny scissors are going to really come in handy they can get right in there. I love these mitten scissors from Resin Fly, they're really good. So now that's out of there, let's go ahead and fill up that cavity with the resin. And if you didn't do that, if you didn't cut those out, then it would be, um, it would harden those and it would be, it would look messy. Just wouldn't look that good. Let that soak in a second. And then hit it with the light. Now it has not bumped up over that, so there's still a bit of a cavity. So I like to add a little more if that happens. Kind of give it a little bulge to look like part of a head. There we go. And that that evens that out. then turn it straight and we're gonna do one last thing so this is fishable just like it is and those eyes I mean they're still gonna pop off it's more strong than any other way I've found to attach them definitely more strong than just the super glue but this is gonna really help so I've got this stuff and it's called solar as ultra thin so that was thin this is ultra thin it comes in a little jar with a cap on it that has a built-in kind of paintbrush and it's super thin so it's not going to bulk this up at all but we just paint this over the eyes and once that you know that's gonna coat everything and it's gonna create kind of like gonna encase those eyes around resin attached up to the hook eye and all that and that is gonna be really difficult for a fish to get its tooth in there and pop that off. It's just not going to happen. Their teeth aren't going to be able to attach there. Now, I mean, it could catch in the back here and still rip those off. I mean, nothing's 100% perfect, but that sure goes a long way. And I find that they tend to be a little more, uh, quite a bit more secure when you do it that way. Um, but eyes are never going to last forever. There's no way um, that I've found that they last forever, but that, that goes, it, it is going to help. So. We're gonna do one last trim. Let's see if I can do it right on the vise here. Uh, 
I'm going to thin this out just a little more. It seemed a little thick. And then let's round that head off a little more. Make it look a little cleaner. side here. I think we're good. There we go guys. That's the finished game changer. This tail really does have a lot of movement. These look great in the water. They fish well. I have yet to find a species of fish that won't eat these besides maybe even carp, I think, eat them. But anything that eats a bait fish would love these. So, again, they can be tied in so many different color combos. Um, and this just moves so great. I've done videos before with some underwater footage of these. And they just, you can see how great they move underwater. I'll link to some of those videos. Um, I've got some shorts and stuff, uh, short videos. Yeah, it would be footage of a different one, not this one. But that's just how they move. So, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. If you haven't already, check out my sponsor, Riz and Fly. They manufacture hooks, rods, reels, a um, whole bunch of stuff. Uh, pretty much anything you absolutely need to go fishing, uh, fly fishing. You can get, um, they have a rod there that's $119. And then they also offer all my subscribers a discount. So after the discount, it would be right at the $100 mark. And it is one of the best rods I have ever fished. I mean, in reality, for the money. Of course, uh, I'm fishing like $900 rods that were really great. But for the money, I mean, $100, I would say anything under $300 just can't touch it for the rod. I mean, it's just absolutely an amazing rod. It casts so well. It really is a great rod, and I fish with it all the time. Um, and I've got some expensive stuff that I choose to fish with that, um, even on my fun days when I'm not filming, okay? So it's not just because they're my sponsor. I really do like their stuff. Um, so check them out. Go to www.risenfly.com and type in McFly at checkout for 15% off of anything on your first order. So you can get a bunch of hooks. You can get, um, if you're going to tie your own, um, they do sell flies as well. Uh, you can buy um, rods, reels, line, um, stream side accessories. They got, they got a great line of fly tying scissors. I really like their scissors. Um, they're just absolutely super sharp, um, high quality scissor. I really like them, but, um, and a good price too. I mean, everything they sell is usually about anywhere from 25 to, you know, even up to 75% less than what name brand offers. And they're as good and sometimes better. So definitely check them out. Again, www.risenfly.com and type in McFly at checkout for 15% off. So, also, if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the like button if you liked it, like this video. Um, otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video. Now you go catch some fish.